He begins by declaring the word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morathshite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. So basically, we realize that he is a contemporary to Isaiah, the prophet, prophesying during the time that Isaiah was prophesying to Hezekiah the king. Micah's prophecies were mostly centered on the northern kingdom of uh, Israel, and uh, yet he does bring in Jerusalem and Judah into the prophecies too. The things which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Uh, but as we mentioned, the, the majority of the prophecies will be towards Samaria. Hear all ye people, hearken, O earth. So actually he's, he's, he begins by a very broad uh, prophecy, uh, not limited to just Samaria and Jerusalem, but now all of the inhabitants of the earth. Uh, o earth and all that therein is, let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. God has a case against the world. For behold, the Lord cometh, he cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. The mountains shall be molted or melted under him. The valleys will be split and wax as wax before the fire and the waters that are poured down a steep place. Great cataclysmic judgment of God is coming upon the whole earth. This is a looking forward to the future, to the great tribulation period and the cataclysmic judgments of God that are described in Revelation chapter 6 through 18. For the transgression of Jacob is all of this and for the sins of the house of Israel. But what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? So the capitals, Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom, Jerusalem the capital of the southern kingdom. And in these cities, which were the uh, centers of government, the Washington DCs, so to speak, of uh, the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah, they're in the capital among the uh, rulers, there was corruption. Uh, there was uh, a turning away from the truths of God. And thus the corrupt government uh, opens the door for the corruption of the nation. And so he is speaking out against the centers of government, uh, which should be the Areas where there is the seeking and the pursuing of the preservation of that which is good. That's really the purpose of government. To see that the good is preserved. But the government have been corrupted uh, by bribes and uh, by the lust for power. And thus they were not really serving the people any longer and as a result uh, the calamity is going to come not only upon Samaria and Jerusalem God's judgment is going to come upon the whole earth therefore I will make Samaria as a heap of the field it'll just uh, become uh, a, a mound like a heap of the field just a uh, you might say a tell which Samaria has become and uh, as the plantings of a vineyard and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley and I will discover the foundations thereof the city will be raised 
down to the foundations. The stones of the city will be rolled down into the valley. And uh, it'll be a place where they'll just plant vineyards. Today, uh, most of the site of Samaria is covered by olive trees. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's ruined. It's desolate. Uh, you can go there and you can see the valleys filled with rocks uh, that were once the great buildings of the city of Samaria. But the judgment of God upon it because of their transgressions. And the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces. And the hires thereof shall be burned with fire. And... Uh, all of the idols thereof will I lay desolate, for she hath gathered, gathered it of the hire of a harlot or prostitute, and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. So God's destruction upon Samaria announced by the prophet. Now, the reaction of the prophet over the vision that God gives him, the, the destruction of Samaria, his reaction just, it hasn't yet happened, it's about to happen. But his reaction is that of, I will wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the dragons and a mourning uh, like the owls. Seeing the destruction, uh, you remember uh, Jeremiah wept over the judgment of God that, was, uh, that befell Jerusalem. Here he sees the vision of the destruction of Samaria, and it is so graphic, it is so real, that the prophet is, is wailing, weeping, because he can see the desolation. It is much as Jesus, when he was on the Mount of Olives, and he was looking down at Jerusalem, and he foresaw the judgment as the result of the Roman armies. He said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and all that have been sent by God unto thee, how often I would have gathered you together as a hen doth gather her chicks, but you would not. But now your city is going to be laid desolate. And, and he described how the children were going to be dashed in the streets and, and how the, uh, the city was to be destroyed. And Jesus wept over the destruction that was going to come, knowing that it would happen because of the path that they had chosen was a path that leads to destruction. And so the prophet Micah, sees the desolation that will be coming upon Samaria. The city will be destroyed. The uh, walls taken down to the foundations, the buildings down to the foundations. It will be a place where uh, just a heap in the ground where vineyards will be planted in time to come. And, and thus he wails and howls over the destruction of this glorious, beautiful city of Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom. For her wound is incurable. Uh, there, there comes a place of no return. The proverb speaks of he that hardeth, hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. No return, no remedy. Here the wound is incurable. For it is come unto Judah. Now he turns from the northern kingdom of Samaria and looks now at Judah. He has come to the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem a reference to the Assyrian king who conquered the northern kingdom and destroyed Samaria but will actually come to the very gates of Jerusalem. And of course we know from history and from the prophecies of uh, Isaiah and all that when they came to Jerusalem, God intervened and destroyed the Assyrian army. But uh, 
uh, declare ye it not at Gath, weep ye not at all in the house of Ephra, roll thyself in the dust. Now, the prophet gets here um, using uh, an interesting form of, of language that doesn't translate into English, uh, into our King James. But let me sort of give it to you a, a, a literal kind of a translation of these names because uh, the, it's a play on words uh, as he speaks of the names of these various places uh, that are to be destroyed. The coming disaster is not to be published in Gath. That is, the Philistines are not to hear of it. There is a remarkable play on words. It may be literally rendered as follows. Weep not in weep town. Uh, actually, uh, the Aphra uh, or, or Gath is, is weeping, and so weep not in weep town. Uh, Aphra means dust, and so in dust town, roll thyself in the dust. In beauty town, sapphire means beauty, uh, be in nakedness and shame. And in march town, the meaning of Zanan, march not forth. Uh, the inhabitant of Maroth waited anxiously for good, but evil came from the Lord under the gate of Jerusalem. And Maroth means bitterness. Uh, so... Uh, the, in the Assyrian cylinder known as Taylor Cylinder, Sennacherib mentions the great gate of Jerusalem and thus the bitterness uh, there. And then follows the call to Lekish to escape. Bind the chariot with the swift beast. Uh, Lekish was the fortified city uh, of the northern kingdom way up in the area near Mount Hermon. It was taken by Sennacherib. And another play on words for the original, Lekesh means horse town. And so it can be translated, bind the chariot to the horse, O inhabitant of horse town. Uh, it's been suggested that the sin mentioned in connection with Lekesh was that the horses of the sun in connection where idolatry were kept there. So uh, he plays on words, roll in the dust, dust town. And uh, uh, the uh, weep in weep town and all. Yet, in verse 15, in spite of the fact that they were to be destroyed, the judgment of God was to come by way of the Assyrian army. Yet I will bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Merasheth. Here now is a prophecy of Jesus Christ and, and the future. As we have said, prophecy never ends in the darkness. The final chapter is always glorious light. That's comforting to know. You may be going through a trial, but God doesn't intend to leave you in the darkness of that trial. It may be a hard experience that you're going through, but God has no intention of leaving you in the hard place. He always brings us out to the light on the other side. And so you go through the book of Revelation from chapters 6 to 18, and those are dark days of great tribulation. But the book of Revelation doesn't end in chapter 18. As you go on, it gives you the glorious description of heaven and the eternal glory of God's kingdom and God's people. Never leaves you in the darkness, the great tribulation, but takes you on to the glorious future that God has for each of us. And so he is pronouncing this judgment, this uh, devastation that is going to come. But then he moves beyond it to the glorious day of the Lord. 
and that which the Lord is going to do. The heir, O inhabitant of Meresheth, he shall come to Abdullah with the glory of Israel. And so make thee bald and pull thee for the delicate children. Enlarge your baldness as an eagle, for they are gone into captivity from thee. Uh, the baldness, the shaving of the head was done at the death of a loved one. And uh, there is going to be death and devastation. But um, the, the future will hold really the glory of Israel uh, will come. Woe to them that devise iniquity, that work evil on their beds, and when the morning is light, they practice it because it's in the power of their hand. People who spend the night devising, scheming, how they're going to maneuver and outwit and how they're going to cheat and uh, how they're going to act. You know, it's interesting how that uh, during the night hours, so many times you lie there just thinking about your problems and, and ways by which you're going to uh, deal with situations. Uh, I have spent a lot of nights in, in, in working through uh, certain problems and situations. And uh, so here is a woe pronounced to those who would devise iniquity. And even as many times you might be there devising uh, ways by which you can accomplish certain tasks, there are people who lie there just figuring out ways to cheat, ways to steal, scheming, uh, in how they can destroy and when the morning has come, they practice it because it's in the power of their hands. They covet fields and then they take them by violence and houses and take them away. You know, there, there are those who, who are, are, are really charlatans that do things just like this. They... Take a person who is going through financial problems and uh, they will come and offer to uh, take your property. And uh, they'll, you know, take over your property. You're about to lose it. And, oh, we'll take it over for you, you know. And uh, then they will go ahead and Take your property, but they'll not complete the transaction. Uh, they will uh, rent it out and collect the rent. And uh, then they'll try and borrow a second against it. And, and then they'll let the whole thing foreclose and it's still on your head. You're in worse trouble, but they, they, they think up these awful schemes. I mean, there are so many ways by which people are seeking to take your money from you uh, and, and to rip you off. And, and there, it's just very common today. There are so many rip-off schemes. Uh, and that was what was happening. This is what God was opposed to. God's opposed to those who would rip off others, take advantage of others, um, and, and they covet a person's field. They take them by violence. Their houses, they take them away. And they oppress the man and his house, even the man and his family. Uh, they, but they have no heart, it seems. They have no conscience on these things. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from which you shall remove your necks, uh, or not remove your necks, uh, neither shall you go haughtily, for this is time, for this time is evil. And in that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with doleful lamentation and say, We are utterly spoiled. 
He hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me? Turning away, he hath divided our fields. And therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot for the congregation of the Lord, or in the congregation of the Lord. You're going to lose your land. There will be no more surveying of the land. That is the casting of the lot to set the borders for the property. Uh, This won't be happening anymore because you're going to be taken out of the land. The land that God gave to you and divided to you by lot under Joshua is now going to be taken away from you because of your corrupt practices. But now as he is prophesying these things, the evil that is going on, exposing the evil. A false prophet speaks up and says, don't prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them that they shall not take shame. So he was commanded not to prophesy by the people. Don't talk to us about these things. They were filled with evil practices, but they didn't want to be rebuked for them. Leave us alone. Let us do our dirty deeds. Don't try to put a guilt trip on us. And they refused to take shame. They were not ashamed of the things that they were doing. I have met people like this. Pathological liars. Guys that rip off people, make their living by ripping people off. And they're not at all ashamed of what they do. In fact, they brag about what they've done. Boast of their evil. And and that was how far down this society had gone. Where they were boasting of their evil. They were parading their evil. And so the prophet said to them, O thou that are named the house of Jacob. It's irony there. That's what you are named. That's what you call yourself, the house of Jacob. But there's no relationship between you and Jacob. In reality, you are not like your father Jacob at all, who had faith and trust in God, who was blessed of God, who honored God. You, 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 have, you have the name of the house of Jacob, but you don't have the spirit of Jacob. Is the spirit of the Lord straightened? You say, don't prophesy. Are you going to control the spirit of the Lord, what he has to say? Are you going to try to dictate to God What you will hear? Will you try to set limits on the work of the Spirit? Is the Spirit of the Lord straightened? Are you able to control what the Spirit says? Are these his doings, these rip-offs and all that you are uh, guilty of, are these his doings? Is, Is this of God? And of course, we know the answer is no. God wants us to be honest. God wants us to be upright. He wants us to be pure. These things are not of God. This cheating, the coveting of fields, taking them by violence, taking houses, that's not of God. These are not his doings. Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? 
If you are walking uprightly, the word of God is good to you. The Bible says that uh, the authorities are not a terror to the evildoers. You know, if, if you are a good, upright person, obeying the law, you don't fear when you see a policeman. In fact, you're sort of comforted. Well, good to have a little, you know, patrolling in this neighborhood of ours. Uh, but if you're an evil person, if you've got a record and if you're wanted, then, man, terror every time you see a black and white, you know, you know, and you, 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 you have that fear and terror. The word of God. To the upright, it's good. If you're living in according to it, you enjoy it. You love it. If you're not, then you say, oh, don't tell me about that. You know, I don't want to hear it. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Don't tell me I'm sinning. I don't want to hear it. But to the upright, the word of God is good. As we gather tonight and study the word and read the word of God, it's good to us because we want to walk in his path, a life that is pleasing to him. The prophet said, even of late, and literally that is yesterday, my people is risen up as an enemy. And you pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men adverse from war. There was the outer garment and, of course, there was uh, the um, uh, robe was the outer. It, was, it would wrap around and people would actually use it as a blanket at night. And uh, then the tunic that was uh, near the body. Now, you could not keep a, as a pledge. Some of you borrow loan money to someone, they give you their uh, uh, robe as a pledge. You couldn't keep it overnight because then he'd be cold and and if he was freezing, not having his, his robe, he might curse you. So uh, you weren't to keep the pledge overnight. Uh, you could keep the tunic, but not the pledge. Uh, not, not the robe. Now, uh, here they were taking both as perhaps for pledges, the robe and the tunic. Or someone else has suggested, other commentators have suggested, that... When the refugees of war from the northern kingdom of Samaria fleeing the advancing Assyrian troops, as in war you always have the refugees who are fleeing from the war. And as they were passing down through Judah, fleeing from the advancing armies of the Assyrians, that the people were ripping them off, taking whatever they were bringing, the, the, the possessions that they had, what precious possessions they were able to flee with, that as they were coming into Judah, they were being ripped off from these possessions. Taking advantage of the hardship of another person. Enriching yourself over their hardships. What an evil thing. Here's a person in real trouble. And there are those that look upon them as a prey. Ah, an opportunity to rip them off. How evil can you get? People fleeing from the advancing troops of the Assyrians. And, and they come through with, with what valuables they could take and carry. And, and then they are there ripping them off of those valuables. And, and that was going on at that time. And the, the Hebrew is yesterday and it continues. It, it was a continuing thing among them. The women of my people have you cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have you taken away my glory forever. Uh, that uh, the women were coming uh, as refugees, but they were uh, actually enslaving them. 
and uh, taking their children. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, and it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood and lies, saying, I will prophesy to you of wine and strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. So uh, they were setting up prophets who would tell them the things they wanted to hear. The Bible speaks about the last days and people with itching ears heaping unto them uh, those who would just entertain them, uh, those who would uh, just not really preach the word of God to them, but tell them pleasant things that they want to hear. That it's all right to sin. Uh, that it really doesn't matter how you live. God is loving and forgiving. And, and thus, uh, it really doesn't hurt to do a little wrong, a little evil. And those who are condoning and encouraging evil. And that's the kind of prophets these people were looking for those that could talk to them about fine wine, those that would encourage them to strong drink. But God promises to the faithful remnant, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel I will put them together as the sheep of Bozrah, as the flock in the midst of their fold, and they shall make a great noise by reason of the multitude of men. God promises the day is going to come when he is going to restore the nation of Israel. His hand will be upon them, and they will be restored to their land. The breaker is come up before them and they have broken up and passed through the gate and are gone out by it and their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. The breaker going before to break up the walls and to make passage for them so that they can pass through the gate and go in and out by it. Their king, Jesus Christ, will pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. Jehovah leading. And I said, Here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment should you not know the laws of God, the heads of the nation, the rulers, the princes, who hate the good and love the evil? What a tragic time for a nation when the leaders and the lawmakers of the nation hate the good, and love the evil. I mean, a nation cannot exist or continue very long once this happens. When the leadership becomes so corrupt that they hate the good and love the evil. I wonder just how far we are from that being applicable to our nation today and the leadership of the nation. When I read of some of the laws that are being enacted 
and some that are being proposed. It would appear that those that are in power hate the good and love the evil. You see, you are the bad one because you object to the breakdown of the family. You object to what's going on in, on TV. You object to uh, the types of movies that are being produced. You object to pornography. You object to the killing of innocent babies. So you're evil. They are the good ones. They believe in the freedoms. And, uh, and, and you're the one that's trying to restrict and restrain people from their own freedoms. And thus, you are evil. They are the good. And laws are being made to protect the evil and to punish the good. These laws concerning discrimination, these laws that are designed to give those who are living perverted lifestyles special privileges, they are being considered now in the United States government, national, federal laws that would grant to the homosexual community special rights as a minority group. Rights against discrimination. What does it mean? In Minnesota, where there is this kind of law, there were two ladies, young ladies, who were renting in an apartment and advertised for a roommate, that is someone to share the apartment. They had room for one more and they wanted to divide the expenses. A lesbian came and applied for the room, but when she announced the fact that she wasn't a lesbian, they said no, they didn't want to rent the room to her. She took them to court. The judge ordered that they both pay her $1,000 and they had to go to school by court order to study the lesbian lifestyle. That's what the laws mean, and that's what the laws will bring. And people say, oh, you're objecting to, you know, you, you want to discriminate and all. You see, you're the bad one. But when these become laws, and, and that's what was happening in Israel, the princes, the, the rulers of the land, were not really bringing forth good judgments at all. They should know what was right. They should know the laws of God. But they hate the good and they love the evil. And they are using their position to rip the people off. Like a shepherd that is only interested in his sheep, for his own benefit. Ripping off the skin. Flaying the skin from off of them. Breaking the, bo the, the bones. Chopping them in pieces to make soup as flesh within the cauldron. And they eat the flesh of my people. The, the rulers were living high lifestyles, taxing more and more the people, imposing more and more taxes on them, destroying the people. 
taking advantage of the people. And the Lord speaks against this. Now, I happen to, to agree with the Lord. <laughs> I think these things are evil. I think it is wrong. I think that it is wrong to be self-serving in a position of government and power, to use that position to enrich yourself and to take advantage of people. Now, in the time of the calamity, when the judgment of God begins to come upon them, they shall cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Comes a time when God says, I won't listen. You may cry, you may plead, I won't listen. Because of your actions, because of what you've done, when the day of the judgment and calamity comes, you may cry unto the Lord, but he, but he won't hear. To me, that's sort of a warning. Because a lot of people think, well, you know, I'll, I'll just live in rebellion against God, the word of God. I'll do my own thing. And then when, you know, I, I see that car jump the divider and heading towards me just before the impact, I'll say, oh, God, forgive me of everything I've ever done. Poof, you know, <laughs> and I'll be saved. But you don't have a guarantee that he'll hear you. Here, when the judgment comes, God said, they'll cry unto me, but I won't, I'll hide my face from them. You have no guarantee that God will hear that deathbed prayer. You may have gone so far that God will say, when they cry in the day of calamity, I won't, I won't hear. I will hide my face from them. So don't depend upon a deathbed repentance kind of thing. I believe it can happen, but don't depend on it. Because you can't be sure that God is going to listen in the day of calamity because it may be that he has brought the judgment upon you because of your continual rejection of him and his ways. So they will cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Tragedy. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, these false prophets, of which the world has always been filled. Men who tell you that uh, the Bible doesn't really mean what it says, or the Bible isn't really the inspired word of God in totality. There are portions of the Bible that uh, are questionable. And, and they, they try to modify the things that God has said to make people feel more comfortable in sin. They espouse evil causes. You know, it is always upsetting to me when the newspaper reporters want to do an article on some evil within the society. They can always find some guy with a reverend on his name to give some off-handed, stupid remark like, well, you know, God created everything. He created drugs. And so a little, you know, controlled use of drugs can be beneficial to some people. And, and they, they will espouse the uh, making drugs illegal, you know. They, they will espouse removing the, Ill the illegality of drugs. They can always get some minister somewhere around the country to uh, give a favorable kind of comment concerning evil that people want to do. They call themselves liberal. But Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. 
few there be that find it. You might want to take the broad way, but be careful. The Lord says it leads to destruction. So these prophets that make the people to err, my people, and God, interesting, is still calling them his people. At this time, I would have said, those people. (laughs) (laughs) They make my people that bite with their teeth and cry, peace. And he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Even prepare war against God. Crying peace. But there is no peace with God. They're at war with him. Therefore night shall be unto you. And ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you. Now night and darkness are always associated with evil. And you will not divine, you will seek the word of God. You'll seek the knowledge of God, the help of God, but it won't come. God will refuse to speak any longer. The sun will go down on these prophets and the day will be dark over them. The sun is going down on the opportunities for people to get right with God. Days of darkness are coming, great darkness, a literal darkness, according to the book of Revelation. And God is declaring that these false prophets will come to their doom. The day is going to be dark over them. Then shall the seers, the prophets, be ashamed, and the diviners confounded yea they shall all cover their lips for there shall be no answer from God Uh, a day when God is not speaking any longer and then the shame that comes to them but in contrast to the false prophets here Micah declares but truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. What a glorious thing to be able to say. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon on you that kind of power is what Micah was experiencing that power of the Holy Spirit in his life and that is the kind of power that we need to experience that dynamic that power of the Holy Spirit how desperately we need that how desperately the church needs that we have sought to substitute other things for the preaching of the word under the power of the Holy Spirit. Many churches in their endeavor to be relevant to the modern age and to adapt the gospel to the present day. Like the gospel is sort of a wax nose, you just reshape it to fit every new generation. And and they try to be relevant in the message and thus forsaking the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. They seek to draw people by drama by entertainment, the most expensive organ in America, the greatest choir 
in America. And all kinds of entertaining devices. But they can't really say as did Micah, truly I am full of power by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord. Because they have denied the power of the Spirit of the Lord. A tragic day when a person relies upon himself rather than upon the Spirit of God for the teaching of the Word or the preaching of the Word. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, but also of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. God has given me the power of his spirit to declare his truth, the judgment that is going to come, to speak out against the transgressions and against the sins of Jacob and Israel. Hear this, he said, I pray you, you heads of the house of Jacob, you rulers, over God's people, you princes of the house of Israel, that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. You are building your houses, your beautiful public buildings, with the blood money from the people that you have exacted and taken from them. The people are destitute. You're, ex you're exacting too much, but you're building up these great monuments and all, but it's money that people have worked for, labored for. The heads thereof judge for reward. They are ready to take a bribe. They're ready to give favors for those who will support their campaigns. And those who have supported their campaign. I heard the other day of the figure of how many million dollars the homosexual community devoted to Clinton's campaign in order that he might promote the gays in the military and the legislation that gives them special privileges. That's what was happening in Israel. And the prophet is speaking out against it. The priests thereof teach for hire. If you want counseling, they'll charge you. If you want to know what the word of God has to say, well, cross my palm with the dollar, dearie, and we'll give you the word of God. And the prophets divine for money. Everything has been turned into uh, monetary gain. No real serving of God. No real feeling of a servant of God, but I'm a hireling. I want to be paid. Yet, will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? And because God is with us, no evil can happen. They, they felt that somehow the temple was magic. 
And as long as they had the temple, God was dwelling with them. And as long as the temple was there, no evil could harm them. They felt that it would be sort of like a, a, a rabbit's foot or, or a magic amulet that would somehow uh, amulet that would somehow protect them from evil. And uh, so, though they were corrupt, horribly corrupt, mercenaries, is not the Lord still here? God is temple. No evil will come upon us. Therefore shall Zion, for your sake, be plowed like a field. The city is going to be destroyed. And it will become a wasted area. And Mount Zion will be plowed like a field. Up until just... The last few years, the area of Mount Zion was, was just a hillside. Now it's covered quite a bit with houses, but uh, even there, still there's a lot of barrenness there. But it was, it was just fields. Uh, uh, some of the earlier uh, writers, of, of, the hist- or writers of, of the land, of the book, uh, describe back in the uh, 1800s going to Israel, they described Mount Zion as, as the fields uh, that were cultivated on the side of Mount Zion. Once the great city of God, but plowed like a field. And Jerusalem shall become heaps, just piles of debris, And the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. The desolation is going to come. Though you might be trusting in the fact that the temple is still there, it's not going to preserve you from the judgment of God because of the evil practices and the corruption of government. God's judgment will surely come. What a lesson that is for us in this day in which we live. What an incentive, as the prophet will say in the next chapter, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. It's in chapter 6. This is what God requires. This is what God wants. Just be fair. Do justly. Love mercy. Be forgiving. Be kind. Be considerate. Be compassionate upon those that are going through difficulty. And walk humbly with your God. Not in proud arrogance. But walk humbly. That's what God wants. That's all God wants. Just do justly, love mercy, walk humbly. They weren't doing that. They were haughty and proud. They had set themselves against God. They weren't doing justly. They had perverted justice and judgment. And they were exacting tolls against people that were not even owed. They didn't love mercy but they were exacting heavy tribute from the people. And God was not pleased. And thus the pronounced judgment would come. There comes a time in a nation when it's gone the cycle and it's come to the end. So it was with Israel. So it was with Judah. Nations that were once known as the people of God. Nations that had experienced the blessings of God. The goodness of God. Have been prospered by God. But now have turned their backs. And have sought to put God out of their national life. Sought to remove God from the consciousness of 
of the children, and those nations always fall. Not necessarily from an outside foe, but many times are toppled because of the rottenness within. It just collapses on itself. The whole economy collapses. The whole value system collapses. And, and really, anarchy sets in. It's ruled by gangs and by factions such as Somalia, the warlords. And the people suffer. God help us. God help us. We're getting close. Father, we pray that you will cause us not to just sit back in comfort watching our TVs, but Lord, may we become very serious concerning the things of the Spirit, concerning our nation and the things that are happening. And Father, may we pray and join together in prayer for those who are in leadership over us. Stir our hearts, Lord, that we might hold up our nation before you. In Jesus' name, amen.